Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for inviting me to come and, and give this talk. Um, I'm now retired, but I was for a while, quite a long time ago, an engineer. Um, in my extreme youth, I was a Merchant Navy deck officer. Um, more recently, I've been um, a clerical worker in, in the university sector, but as I say, I'm now retired. Um, and um, I'm interested in the history of women in engineering. And normally, for the last number of years, I've been researching the histories of real women, dead women mostly. Um, and then I got to thinking about the sort of things that I watched, DVD box sets and what have you, about how rare it was to see fictional engineers of any gender um, portrayed in TV series and the like. Um, the, 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 the picture um, that you're looking at just now is a scene um, from a TV um, series called Serenity um, and you can just about make out a woman in the middle and she's the chief engineer of the spaceship and she's such an engineer she sleeps down there you can see her hammock. I'm not really going to talk about films particularly, I'm going to get round to books. Um, uh, Next slide, please. So I did what one always does, I Googled. And if you Google TV programs by various types of occupation, um, this is kind of what you get. So I bet if you like these kinds of um, TV programs, if you watch crime and police procedurals, you can watch and learn about every role in the police force in almost any country you care to think of from the ground up to the most senior police officer and know everything that police people do. Similarly for legal dramas, um, there is no end of legal series um, featuring corporate legal, criminal, you name it. Um, I bet we all think we know everything about the legal system in Britain and America. And if anything, there's even more covering uh, medicine, um, every conceivable sort of medical drama, um, no shortage of them at all. We know what nurses do, what A&E people do, what doctors, surgeons, everybody. Next slide, please. So I then was looking for TV programs um, about science, and that wrote at the top, only the one with the red ring round it is a fictional story, um, Battlestar Galactica in this case. I mean, there's lots of science fiction on the telly, obviously, um, but there's very little fiction about scientists other than um, forensic scientists, perhaps in the medical genre. And when you go to look for TV programs about engineering, you don't get offered anything that's fictional at all. It's all non-fiction documentaries and so on. Next slide, please. So the next Google effort was um, for fictional engineers. And this came up with this list on the left, and you probably recognize some of those names. I have to say, I'm not too sure who Buckaroo Banzai is, um, but there we go. Of those um, names, um, Scotty from Star Trek, Tony, Tony Stark from Iron Man, Doctor and so on, only the two in red are not part of a science fiction um, story. So Q is the um inventor in in james bond and i consider him to be an engineer sort of person and from quite a long time ago an american series um called macgyver um angus mac macgyver who is somebody that no matter what the situation you put him in he can um cobble together some some contraption or other to get him out of the, the tight spot that he's in and the the verb to MacGyver something, perhaps more in use in America than here, has come to mean, um, as I say, cobbling together from found items, um, some contraption that will help you um, in your tight corner. Um, I then went looking for um, female engineers from science fiction, and there's quite a reasonable list of those because science fiction films there's quite a number of, of uh, women engineers um, in that genre. 
but I'm not really going to be covering uh, films this time. The, the, the two bits of a cartoon strip that I'm showing you, for, for those of you of a certain age, you may remember that there was um, a long-running weekly comic for boys and girls called Eagle, um, with the, the front cover always had um, a story about Dan Dare, space pilot of the future. And this is from the first episode, the first issue of Eagle, when he is introduced to the fact that a Professor Peabody is going to be joining him on his space trip. And then everybody is stunned to discover that Professor Peabody is a woman. Gosh, jumping jets, suffering cats, a woman. Um, now, Professor Jocelyn Peabody, um, in the comics, she's basically, she doesn't appear very often, actually. She's labelled as special advisor um, to the, the space ministry that oversees Dan Dan. She goes with him on some of his missions. Interestingly, I've never seen the TV series, but a cartoon TV series was made um, in which she is actually the chief engineer of Dan Dare's spaceship, the Anastasia, which she's said to have designed herself. So I haven't seen that, but somewhere along the line, she gets sort of translated from a general purpose scientist into an engineer. Next slide, please. So these are the sorts of um, genres, different types of um, fiction in which um, I was able to find examples um, of women engineers, fictional women engineers. Now you'll see the tomboy career novels, heroic munition workers, um, incidental engineering and sagas, detectives and science fiction. I thought I would find more novels written during the two world wars or shortly thereafter about munition workers. Actually, I found very, very few um, and was only actually able to buy two out of the, the four that I ever identified. Um, I also discovered I was quickly sort of stumbling over examples um, in books, um, books written in English about Soviet Russian literature and German literature. Now, I don't read Russian. And I almost barely know any German, I did a little bit at school. But the, this was also quite an interesting um, section. I, I had to rely on sort of um, bits of translations quoted in, in other people's books. Next slide, please. So the tomboy. Um, Wikipedia def defines, and I think you know, that, that they may get some pushback from this definition, but this is what they say. A tomboy is a girl who exhibits characteristics or behaviours considered typical of a boy, whatever a boy is. Common characteristics include wearing masculine clothing and engaging in games and activities that are physical in nature and are considered in many cultures to be unfeminine or the domain of boys. Now, I guess I was that child. Um, I, I was um, born in the 1950s, so I was a, a child of the 60s largely, and I was definitely a tomboy. I'm not sure if the phrase is even much used now. A book that I really loved, and it sounds a bit girly girl for, for, for somebody with my interest, but I, I loved um, Noel Streetfield's Ballet Shoes, which is about three orphan girls who are being raised um, in, in some financial difficulty in London. And Petrova, that's the one on the, the, the drawing on the left, is the middle of the three. And she is our tomboy. And I'm going to read you an extract um, from about halfway through the book. Petrova had a thin, pale face with high cheekbones, very different from Pauline's pink and white oval and Posey's round, dimpled look. She was naturally more serious than the others, and so being bored for eight hours each week, that was in the dance classes, did not show on her as it would on them. It was Sundays that saved her. After morning church, she went straight to the garage, put on her jeans, and though only emergency work was really done on Sundays, the foreman always had something ready for her. Very dirty and happy, she would work until they had to dash home for lunch. Afterwards, occasionally, they came back until tea time. 
then they washed and popped across the road to lions. But usually they went on expeditions in the car, and those expeditions were their secret. Petrova never even told the other two about them. The best of them were to the civil flying grounds where they watched planes take off and alight, and often went up themselves. Sometimes they saw some motor car or dirt track races, but Petrova liked the flying Sundays best. Although, of course, she was years too young to fly. In bed, and at her very few odd moments, she studied for a ground license. And although she had never touched a joystick, she knew that when she did, an aeroplane would obey her, just as certainly as Posey knew that her feet and body would obey her. So Petrova was very much in the, the, the um, tomboy model. Um, and indeed, lots of other uh, series of books, like the Enid Blyton books of the same sort of period, generally featured a tomboy girl in the group. Uh, Petrova is um, one of the fictional characters that people who write fan fiction really like. Um, there are nearly 40 um, amateur written fan fiction stories featuring Petrova Fossil. In some of them she's a garage owner, but in most of them, given that the, the book was published just before the Second World War, in most of the books Petrova becomes one of the women pilots in the air transport auxiliary. And there's quite a number of stories that people have written um, about her carrying on to do that. So that's an example of the tomboy story uh, featuring a girl who likes engineering. Next slide, please. So the next type of, of stories, well, Things called career novels for girls, they also existed for boys, and these were a very particular feature of the post war era. They started at the very end of the Second World War and they really petered out at some point in the late 60s. Um, nearly all of them, the vast majority, were about very conventionally uh, female. Um, traditional roles like nursing, um, various aspects of medicine and teaching. There's a very good book um, by Kay Clifford who has done an academic study of this whole genre um, and from her she gave me lots of um, help in, in identifying the few books um, that feature uh, women engineers. So the one in the middle, and in electronics, I have to say the cover looks the most boring thing imaginable, but it's actually a cracking good story. Um, it's written very realistically. Um, the year it was published was the year after there was um, a, a girls only um, technician apprenticeship scheme in British industry supported by the government. And this book basically describes what that technician scheme set out to do, which was to train quite well-educated girls um, to do research and development technician work um, sort of below the degree level but above um, sort of basic work. And this story about Anne is, is a really good story. It's lots of fun. Um, she and the other girls get into scrapes and they have various romances. Admittedly, at the end, it all ends happily with her marrying a man from the firm. But the interesting thing is, it's made abundantly clear at the very end that both she and her employer expect her to work after she's married. And this in the 1960s was still by no means um, a, an assumption. And she even gives um, a talk to the women's on behalf of the Women's Engineering Society at her old school. The two pictures you can see on the right, the top right hand one, um, Eve at the driving wheel, is from the same series as Anne in Electronics, but it's a really rubbish story. Um, it follows this girl who loves driving, but the opportunities um, that she has for paid driving work are very limited, even by the standards of what was available then. So for instance, it doesn't even mention that she could have gone into the armed forces and been a driver. And they're all things that she gets by people doing her favours. So it's not really such a, um, a promising um, idea of a role model for girls wondering if they could drive for a living. 
The bottom right hand one is an American book um, and it's really a coming of age book rather than a career novel. Um, Crazy Mary follows the story of a girl who leaves high school um, and goes to um, college to do a course that her parents want her to do but she's never really happy and it's only in the last two pages that she recognizes that um, her maths teacher at high school was right she does have a head for maths and what she'd really like to do is engineering and we leave her just at the point where she's about to go off on a summer vacation uh, with a view to coming back the following year to take her engineering degree so that's those were the sort of books that were being offered um, as fictional examples for girls in the 1950s and 60s. Um, very, very few um, of them were really challenging what um, normal the conventions were for, for, for girls' careers. Next slide, please. So here we have um, some examples of the he heroic munition workers. On the left, we've got Munition Mary, a book I have not been able to buy, but I've been able to see it in the National Library of Scotland. And the bottom one, a girl munition worker, both of those written for probably 10 or 11 year old girls um, based on First World War um, munition work. Um, Munition Mary is quite interesting, written by um, a woman who wrote a lot of girls' novels, a woman called Brenda Gervin, and it was de dedicated in the front to my, a woman called Margaret Kemp Welch um, as my munition friend, which implies that the two of them worked together on some form of munition work. Now, Margaret Kemp Welch was actually at the time quite a well-known London artist. Um, she has a Wikipedia page and everything. Um, so Brenda Gervin must have known something of what she was talking about. There's very little actual engineering in it. Um, Girl Munition Worker, the one underneath, is sort of similar. Again, very little. They are basically sort of wartime romances. Um, with a, with a smattering of munition work um, scattered through them. On the other hand, the one on the right, which is from the Second World War, Feud in the Factory, um, by Lorna Lewis. This is Lorna Lewis's second book, um, and the first one she wrote was about was a, a fictionalized version of her experiences of running a mobile canteen in in the Blitz. And this one is based again on her experiences of working um, in an aircraft factory. It's got these very nice drawings um, in, in it of, of women doing the kind of work that was done then. And it's actually quite a good story. And I'm going to read you a bit from this. So that our, our heroine um, is, is Rosie Henderson, who's in charge of a, a group of women making um, components for aeroplanes. Um, the curious fact persisted that work went better if the workers were thoroughly interested in something, even if it had no, no connection with the war, with machinery, or even with peace rates, bonuses, and flat rates of pay. I've been thinking it over, Rosie said to Mickey when they were having coffee together, and I think it's what they call industrial psychology. It had been a lovely evening, first of all a very good high tea and then an exciting film. Industrial psychology, repeated Mickey, that's ways of getting people to do the jobs that suit them and getting the best work out of them and that kind of thing, isn't it? It's a very big subject, said Rosie, stirring her coffee. It's all about working conditions, having machines at the right height, showing you how to apply some dodges, such as the quickest way to top and tail gooseberries and handle screws and things like that. Mickey looked lost. Gooseberries and screws, he asked plaintively. Oh, well, I mean, instead of picking up gooseberries one at a time and cutting their tails off and then stretching your arm down and picking up another, you hold several in the palm of your hand and that saves time and energy. You can do the same with screws as you put them into the machine. The best people always save unnecessary labour. You manage quicker and keep fresher. So this is a book that actually has a reasonable um, amount of clearly examples based on her own experience. And this is quite a, quite a good story. Again, there are upsets and difficulties and um, a bit of sabotage and one thing and another, but a good story um, 
about life at that time. Next, please. Next, thank you. So I've grouped these together because these are stories in which the engineering is so incidental as to be barely noticeable at all. Um, and there are a number of sagas, both First and Second World War, that fall into this category. Um, and The Shipyard Girls is a very long running saga uh, by Nancy Revel. I found, I, I didn't buy any others, so I've only read one. Um, of that series um, and another book um, the Brooklyn's girls neither of them have very much engineering at all Brooklyn's is actually practically um, a trades description fail because there's only one bit where there's a couple of pages which even refer to, to anything happening at Brooklyn's for those of you who don't know Brooklyn's was the first purpose-built um, motor racing track down in the south of England and it also has um, an airfield in the middle um, and so it was quite a focus for both men and women who were into early car racing and early aviation. So it gives the impression that it's going to be about girls who spend their whole time at Brooklyn's racing cars and it really isn't at all. Um, the other book, uh, Courage of the Shipyard Girls, has a little bit more, but not an awful lot. This is your classic saga, a fat book um, about the lives and loves of a group of girls. But here is a little, a very short example of one of only two um, episodes where engineering is mentioned. So Rosie, um, I have another Rosie here. Uh, Rosie um goes into um her, the female the lady supervisor's office her, the lady supervisor is helen um and helen says will you please sit down this may take a little time and i don't want to crane my neck up at you while we discuss what we've got to discuss rosie did as she was told and sat herself down and what is it we have to discuss rosie asked looking around the room she couldn't believe how organized and tidy it looked Helen had obviously been spring cleaning. Well, first of all, I'm putting in a big order and I want to know if you and your squad need anything. I know you are hankering after a new welding machine. Rosie perked up. She was forever fixing the one she had, which was well and truly on its last legs. Well, yes, that would be great if we could. Now, as I say, that's a very little tiny bit of engineering, but it's almost the only mention in the book. So that's what I call incidental. The other um, story, well, it's actually a play. Um, on the right hand side, you can see the, the, the front page of the book of the play and a photo of it being enacted. This is a play by Bernard Shaw and it was called Mrs. Warren's Profession. Um, and when it was published, um, the Lord Chancellor had strict um, rules and could, could ban plays. Um, if he thought they were immoral. And this play was banned for a long time. Um, and the picture on the right is actually from a private um, staging of the play. It wasn't publicly staged until the 1900s. Um, and the reason it was banned is that it's a story about Mrs. Warren and her daughter. And Mrs. Warren is um, a high class prostitute, which of course that's, that's why the Lord Chancellor banned the play. And the point is that her daughter Vivi has been raised at some considerable expense as a genteel young lady of the, of the sort of moneyed middle classes, has no idea what her mother does and the play is about her discovering this and actually as it turns out she doesn't care. Um, but Vivi um, is portrayed as a very modern young woman and She's described as, as, as being um, smartly, uh, neatly dressed and um, carrying useful items um, slung at her belt, things like a, a pen knife and so on. And here she's telling somebody um, about how she um, got a very good maths degree from Cambridge. Um, and this was written um, just after um, a very famous occasion when a real woman called Philippa Summers. Um, got such high grades in the Cambridge Maths exam that her marks were above those of 
the, the, the best man in the, that year's exams. Now in Cambridge, they call the, um, the, the, the top um, maths graduates wranglers and the senior wrangler is the man who gets the most marks. Now in those days, Cambridge didn't give women degrees. They could take degrees, but they couldn't get, they could, they could take the courses, but they couldn't get an actual degree. So a woman couldn't be a wrangler, but they published the list with the women inserted in the relevant order. So this real woman, Philippa Summers, was ahead of the senior male wrangler. And in this story, Vivi is third wrangler. Um, so, you know, a very, very high qualification. So Vivi is describing um, herself to somebody. My dear Mr. Pride, do you know what the mathematical tripos means? It means grind, grind, grind for six to eight hours a day at mathematics and nothing but mathematics. I'm supposed to know something about science, but I know nothing except the mathematics it involves. I can make calculations for engineers, electricians, insurance companies, and so on. But I really know next to nothing about engineering or electricity or insurance. I don't even really know math arithmetic well. Outside mathematics, lawn tennis, eating, sleeping, cycling, and walking, I'm an ignorant barbarian. So this woman is somebody who works with. Um, engineers uh, to some extent but isn't technically an engineer herself. Having said that, a lot of women who took mathematics degrees in the early part of the, 19th, the early part of the 20th century went on to become engineers um, and I've just recently written a book about a woman who, who did exactly that. Next slide please. So here I've included detectives. Um, so these are three sets of books. Um, I would have to say that um, Fiona Erskine's book, Chemical Detective, the woman is really a chemical engineer. Fiona Erskine is herself a chemical engineer. So she is really writing what she knows about. And this is a woman chemical engineer portrayed in James Bond mode. Um, and it's a cracking good read. And I believe she's written more. Um, B.B. Jordan's books, um, these are American books, and they are um, set more in the life sciences, um, again, written by somebody who is a senior academic in life sciences in America. So those are scientific detectives, but they are, and they are using their science for their detecting. Um, the, the, the green books at the bottom are um, from Marjorie Allingham's enormous list of detective novels set before, during, and after the Second World War. She wrote loads of them. And these are from a series that involve um, a woman called Amanda Fitton, um, who appears in 10 of the books to a greater or lesser extent. She first appears in a book called Sweet Danger, at which point she's only 17 years of age. And she is displaying sort of um, practical engineering skills um, as part of the plot. The next story, um, Fashion in Shrouds, is several years later. She's around about 21 years old. And this is set during the war. Um, and so we, we see her in this one um, as an aeronautical engineer in a factory. However, her engineering really doesn't play any part um, in the actual plot um, of these stories. Um, so the, there's very little actual engineering and I'm going to read you a very short act extract which um, describes uh, just describing her work. Um, uh, she, she works with somebody who is a kind of on and off love interest, Albert Campion, who is a, a sort of a gentleman amateur um, detective and um, Albert um, is wondering how um, she got into um, an airplane at the airplane factory. What I still don't understand is how you got there. He said, I thought airplane works were holies of holies. So they are. Amanda sounded cheerful in the darkness. It took me three and a half years to do it, but I'm a pretty good engineer, you know. I went straight away into the workshops when I got some money. I hadn't a sufficiently decent education to make an ordinary degree, so I had to go to the back. I had to go the back way. My title helped, though," she added honestly. 
Um, and that explains very briefly that she works in an airplane factory. I have to say, like a lot of uh, detective stories that include upper class people, doesn't actually seem to do a great deal of work. Next slide. So I mentioned that I'd found books um, in Russian and German, and these are some examples. Um, Vicky Baum was a very well-known German author, and she wrote this book called Helene, which was actually made into a film, and it was about um, a chemical, a student of chemistry who becomes a chemical engineer. Again, there is proper actual chemistry in it to a limited extent, but mainly it's um, a long-winded romance. But Vicky Baum was a very well-known person and other, other books of hers became films too. Um, from um, uh, an academic book about um, Soviet fiction, I discovered another woman um, author um, who, her real name, she was a real, um, real life Soviet engineer. Her real name was Elena Sergeyevna Wenzel. And she wrote under the pseudonym, under the pen name of Irina Grikova, which in Russian, um, I, I Grikova um, is how they say, um, well, literally Greek Y, um, the Greek letter um, Y, so that's, which is a mathematical symbol. Um, she was a professional mathematician who worked in operational research and um, was married to somebody who was very senior in ballistics research and her most famous um, novel um, about uh, women and engineers was called On Maneuvers and it's about construction engineer um, Lida Romnik who um, designs test rigs for ballistics tests. Um, this book cover that I've showed, Cathedra, um, that, that, the word Cathedra is the Greek word for a chair, as in a seat, but in this case it's a chair as in a professor's um, post at a university, and it's about um, a young woman who is um, a young academic in the science department and her, her run-ins with the, with, the, with the grouchy old professor. There are quite a lot, there's a lot of other books um, and stories about uh, women engineers in, in the Soviet era because so many women were. By and large, they're not about engineering, they are about the difficulties of life um, in the Russian era, how you balance, well, what we call work life balance, how you balance your career against your family needs, and there's loads and loads and loads of them, um, none of which, of course, I can read because I can't read Russian. <laughs> Next, please. So as you'd expect, science fiction, uh, futuristic fiction, does include quite a lot of women um, working in science and engineering. Not so many in the novels. Um, this pink uh, book on the left, Stella, Stella number six, was edited by a very famous uh, female editor who had her own publishing house, a woman called Judy Lynn Del Rey. And I think it's interesting that a female editor was including a lot of female writers in her story. And I got this book because the story by a very well-known female um, science fiction writer, Anne McCaffrey, um, a story called Cinderella Switch, is about, it's basically the Cinderella story in which Cinderella is secretly um, a, a very um, prominent engineer um, who, who has uh, such skills that she designs very high-tech dresses that glow in the dark and so on. Neil Stevenson, a, a more recent uh, science fiction writer, he includes quite a lot of women in his stories. Um, and if you've ever read um, any of Isaac Asimov's robots, or if you've seen the film iRobot, you'll know that he features a woman called Dr. Susan Calvin, who um, sometimes she's portrayed more as a psychologist, sometimes more as an engineer, um, but um, she was a roboticist too. Next, please. So if you're wondering why this even matters, well, it's my opinion that you can't choose to be something if you've never seen one. 
So if you've never met an engineer, if no engineers in your family, um, how would you know what an engineer did all day in order to think that you might fancy doing it? Um, a lot of schools now do bring scientists and engineers in to talk to uh, youngsters about their work and what they do all day. But when you think about that slide I showed at the beginning about the TV series um, of law, medicine, crime, and so on, there's nothing which even features one engineer. I can't even, I mean, I don't watch soap operas, but I doubt if there's been a, an engineer in, in long running soap operas on, on the telly. And now when you look at these two graphs, so the vertical one on the left, is the percentage of engineers who are women, women in different countries around the whole world. And that red line is the UK, very near the bottom. And the countries below there are places like um, Saudi Arabia um, and Japan, which have very traditionalist cultures. The other graph is the graph of um, engineers who are women percentages in the European Union, and the UK is right at the bottom of that graph. There are lots of reasons why this is so, but I think that part of it is because we don't see people doing a range of occupations that might be interesting to them, even if we see them as fiction. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I thought, really, I, I was so hard pressed to think of fictional engineers, let alone women ones, that um, that was why I started looking at this. Thank you. That's me finished. <laughs>